Welcome. Well, you're at home with Jim and Joy, and you are an important part of our EWTN family. And a blessed new year to you. Well, we would love to hear from you, so send us an email with a question or a comment to Jim and Joy at EWTN.com. And today we bring to you Allison and Angie, and they are from the Woman's New Life Clinic in Louisiana and you could go to their website, womansnewlife.com. We had a wonderful conversation Indeed. with the both of them. Yeah. Uh, their centers are right next to, nearby abortion clinics um, in their area, yeah. which, you know, you want to talk about a power encounter. <laughs> I mean, that's, yeah. that's real, and being on the front yeah. lines. Yeah. I think of that scripture, the gates of hell will not prevail yeah. against, you know, uh, you're Peter upon this rock, I'll build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. And you can think about that a number of ways, like the world and Satan attacking the church, but he won't prevail, our gates are strong, or maybe the church pushing up against the gates of hell. That's right. And that's what they're doing. Mm -hmm. They're pushing up against the gates of hell. We're not speaking about the people and all this, but that work is, is of hell. Right. That work is demonic. And they're pushing. How mm -hmm. are they pushing? Their presence, their proximity a tabernacle inside one of those uh, facilities mm -hmm. right by this abortion mill the sign that they have up you know a, a beautiful you know woman saying you know there are other decisions beside this make a decision you're capable of making another decision than this and and when we just if we would just be be near evil i mean evil has no problem coming near us you right. know what i mean mm -hmm. our problem is that the church church shrinks back from going where the war is they take they're taking the battle and they're winning the battle and I thought, you know, as they shared, you know, they shared so beautifully that how many women have said, if I had one person, just one, mm. that would have accompanied me and talked to me about other choices and would say, oh, we're going to support you no matter what, I would have chosen life. Yes. And so here, here they are in two facilities, all these volunteers and people helping, and they're saying, we want to accompany you. We're right here. Here's another option for you. And you know, when we do that, when we have that conversation, we win the conversation at least 80% of the times. Mm -hmm. Women will change their minds. And that's what these centers are offering. That's what we're calling you to get involved with yourself, whether it's uh, womansnewlife.com, their, their places, or just go to Option Line. There's something called Option Line. And, and all you gotta do is put in your zip code, and it will tell you all of the pregnancy resource centers in your area and you can say, hey, I want to be involved. I want to support your work. And another thing, one of the things that the Knights of Columbus have done, for those of you who don't know, we certainly want to give a great shout out to the Knights of Columbus because in 10 years, they put over 1,000 ultrasound machines coast to coast in pregnancy medical centers. They didn't have to be Catholic based. They're Protestant, Catholic, where they're saying, we want to get involved. Yeah. We want to do action and we will give you the tools. You finish the job. The men are saying, we'll sell all these things that we need to sell. The state pay comes up with half the money. National Knights come up with the other half of the money. And we were the first in the state of Alabama. We've received two ultrasound yeah. machines yes. um, from the Knights of Columbus. Yeah. So there's great work for you to do. There's a way to you to get involved. And we certainly want you to stay focused yeah. on this pro-life Go to month. womansnewlife.com. Plenty more to come. We'll be right back. Please don't go away. Welcome back. Well, you're at home with Jim and Joy, and today we bring to you again Allison Millett, who is the CEO of Woman's New Life Clinic, and Angie Thomas, who is the CEO Emeritus of Woman's New Life Clinic. You can go to their website, womansnewlife.com. These ladies are located in the beautiful state of Louisiana. Yeah. Well, we're still getting over LSU and Alabama <laughs> and the whole thing. But you're, you're welcome here. I just want to. What, what you did point out that they were purple and gold like flowers. I, I, the color. I gold think flowers it was a little bit much. All it's all through the lens in which you see. <laughs> yeah. But why don't you share with us again? Because I'm sure we have a lot of folks that watched, uh, you know, our earlier show. But now some 
people are just kind of tuning mm -hmm. in. And share with us again, just give us an overview of your, your center, of your centers, mm -hmm. and kind of the mission again, and the various things that are going on in terms of health care, because it's more broad uh, than just pregnancy tests and ultrasound. Mm -hmm. That would be great mm -hmm. and grand enough. And then this whole counseling aspect to it. So just lay that all out for us as sure. you can. So our mission is to promote the sanctity of life, the dignity of women, and the sacredness of sexuality. And so we have professional counseling services and medical services to achieve that, a unique combination of mm -hmm. the two. Um, so we've just been able to really transcend Planned Parenthood. That's been you know, a, the, the wording that we've used to, mm -hmm. to transcend them. We, ha we offer the same things that they offer, but of course life affirming and mm -hmm. moral options for, right. for women and, um, and their families. So we're, uh, we, we have two clinics, one's uh, in New Orleans, right next door to Planned Parenthood, and one is in Baton Rouge, right next door to Delta Abortion Clinic. Okay. Share with us in terms of the physical care and what you're offering, particulars. Mm -hmm. um, you mentioned sexually transmitted disease testing mm -hmm. and so on. Yeah. What other areas besides the ultrasound and pregnancy tests? Yeah, so be outside of the services yeah. for unplanned pregnancies, right. those medical tests, um, the pregnancy test rather, and the ultrasound in terms of medical, right. we also have well woman care. So in New Orleans, we have a woman's health nurse practitioner on staff right. and has several clinic days a week to offer the annual exam that a woman needs, that basic care mm -hmm. that women who we encounter in our, with, through our unplanned pregnancy services very often has not been mm -hmm. to, to a provider in a very long mm -hmm. time. Um, so she can also offer STD testing, yeah. screening, treatment yeah. for those diseases, right. which, um, as I said prior, it's very important if a woman is considering her options with a pregnancy, if she wants to go look at a, a surgical abortion, it's important to know if she has an STD. Mm -hmm. um, and so we can test her for that, for all women's health. Um, so just basic gynecologic care. And then okay. we, we also have um, instruction in fertility awareness. And we offer several methods in both cities. Okay. So what, what are all those methods that you offer? In New Orleans, we offer the Creighton model system and then the Family of the Americas ovulation method. Mm -hmm. In uh, Baton Rouge, we offer Family of the Americas ovulation and also FEM, which is fairly new in that city. And we're right. so excited to offer that to all of our clients. Yes. Do you see uh, women contacting you uh, that are beyond I need a pregnancy test I need to know if I'm pregnant or not because of the other services that you're using that, yes. that you're offering yes. so you have people most centers who are doing ultrasounds and pregnancy tests women are calling them just because of that area mm -hmm. so they're focused on that but you get the opportunity to serve women in a variety of ways and not only that to be possibly prevent some unwanted pregnancies yes. from taking place or diagnosing yes. something as so you're accomplishing two things at the mm -hmm. same time. Yeah. Their overall health yes. and well-being, but also may maybe they'll reveal in the course of the time they've had an abortion. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, digging deeper to build that culture mm -hmm. of life, you know, to really augment those services to women in unplanned mm -hmm. pregnancies, but to build it out bigger, to kind of encounter her before she gets there, and encounter her after, and right. during, and all around, right? So, so right. many women who come to us for one thing end up yes. uh, using so many of our other services yeah. because, wait, we, I can know about my body? Mm -hmm. Really? Yeah. Yes, we have a practitioner right here available if you'd mm -hmm. like to speak with her. Are all your services free? All of, much, uh, women in, um, all of the women in all the unplanned pregnancy services yeah, are, free. are free. Um, mm -hmm. Our women's health program, we do take insurance and yeah. Medicaid, That's and we right. have a low cost <laughs> cash pay system. We mm -hmm. we have the yes. lowest prices in town. I bet you do. <laughs> and and you take Medicaid too. Yes, we do. Which is really important because most of the clients that are in unplanned pregnancies probably are on Medicaid, mm -hmm. yeah. and so and they're not getting like we'll ask them when was the last time you went to the OBGYN for a checkup. And they'll go, mm, it's been a minute. Okay, well, what's right. a minute? Mm, maybe seven years ago. But meanwhile, I've been sexually active. And meanwhile, I'm going to the clinics just yes. to get birth control. Right. Yes. But I'm not addressing my whole self. Yes. And what about breast cancer and all those issues that, that mm -hmm. women have to deal with? Because mm -hmm. it, it really is um, turning the lights on as to say, you are more than just a sexual object. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's a revelation yes. to some girls, especially, I know a lot of our clients that we see have been sexually abused. Yes. So that's their whole identification, as yeah. tainted and as unhealthy as that is, but yet you have mental 
counseling, right? Yes. Where you're going to deal with a, a, the holistic client to right. say, yeah. okay, how can we help you with yes. that? Yes, mind, body, soul. Yes. For every, uh, for every service, we want to address the physical, yes. the emotional, and yeah. the spiritual. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I've been involved with the movement for a long time and, and the center, and you know, I've been in the center when there was very few people, and then now we have a great group. So mm -hmm. I, I did a lot of aspects, including counseling, mm -hmm. which the women, you know, handle. But I really enjoyed the times that I was involved in doing that. And, and one of the things I learned in the midst of it, you know, the, this whole John Paul's teaching on um, the opposite of love is in hate, the opposite of love is usury. Yes. And helping women to come into that awareness mm -hmm. without even saying it directly, they get the message, oh, I'm being used. That's right. This guy uses me, this because he's, you know, and they, they get that. Um, and I really see the counseling experience as taking the true femininity of a woman and in sharing with her and pulling it out and finally holding it before her and saying, mm. this is what you are. Yes. And you're kind of kissing that and putting it back in and say, be at home. Yes. Be at home. Because once you're at home, wow. you, yeah. you're not, you're not going to think that they're looking for love. Right. right. I mean, looking to be touched. Mm -hmm. They're looking at these all good things within the context of chastity and marriage and, and the family. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of them are, are searching. They're doing these things because they're looking for the greatest thing. Mm -hmm. And to give them, say, this is what you are. And mm -hmm. this is what's, you know, it, yes. it is, if we could lead them to that, then we won't have these repeat, right? 40%, right. 40% right. of the abortions in our right. country, 60 million abortions are repeat abortions. Yeah. And I've counseled the girl 12 abortions. I have a friend who counseled two right. girls about 20 abortions each, okay? Mm, right, and, right. and so there's dramatic reenactment. Right. They, they, they dramatically reenact the situation, like going back to the scene of a crime and trying to master it. But they haven't changed in here. They're not changing the circumstance, and they repeat the crime yes, again yes. and again and again and again. Because the first thing they want, even if it, they had an abortion, is what? I want to know I can get pregnant. I want to know God's not mad at me. Mm -hmm. Mm. How do you do that? I'm going to get pregnant again. I mean, it's, it's, that's where your that's, counseling comes yes, in. Mm -hmm. this, that's right. That, this <laughs> mental health counseling, like we always say, it just changes the trajectory of their lives. To so dig deeper into those core wounds that are mm -hmm. causing them to act out in that way or to choose that, uh, to just dig deeper and and find healing. And yes. We mm -hmm. know who our healing comes right. from, right? Mm -hmm. yes. Yeah. So. And and if you, you refer out also. So w when you say that you give your um, well care, do you take girls all the way up to nine months or do you refer them out to an OBGYN who's going to see them and do the delivery and all that kind of stuff? Yes, our prenatal care program, uh, we can provide care up to 20 weeks okay. with our mm -hmm. nurse practitioner. So you do that up to 20 weeks and then you refer them on to doctors that take mm -hmm. Medicaid and that you yes. know you you know you have clients and, that you're working and with. And who you. are going to respect the woman and that choice. Mm -hmm. We have a, a network of beautiful physicians in the area that have um, mm -hmm. that have yeah. respect what we're doing mm -hmm. and respect what uh, yeah. what that woman chooses. Mm -hmm. And I think that's so important to cultivate relationships with medical providers in our community because so many of the attacks mm -hmm. on human life are at the hands of doctors. Yes. Right. So to be able to like, we, we invite them to mass at our at our chapel. We um, we really try to cultivate that relationship, and that's really been the thing that has allowed us to provide yes. this care yes. on site, yeah. is d these beautiful providers, our nurse mm -hmm. practitioner and the doctor that we're so close with, they they have said yes in such a mm -hmm. remarkable yeah. way. Yeah. It's it's amazing because, you know, since Roe versus Wade and perhaps even before with the advent of, of the pill, um, I mean, there's a whole culture of, of death and mm -hmm. of usury mm -hmm. and separation from children that right. is just a sex act and so on. And we have generations that are growing up with that. They know nothing else. Mm -hmm. right. But because right. of what you're doing and you're right by the Senate, it's ca when they think of health care, you know, let's go to Women's New Life, that's health care. Mm -hmm. And then they see the kind of people. And so you're changing that person's life. You're changing mm -hmm. a whole culture. You're changing the health care delivery system mm -hmm. to be sacred. Mm -hmm. And once people get a taste of that, I mean, they, that's they, what they're going to want. More of them are going to choose that mm -hmm. way. And so you're building a whole right. civilization. Oh, of we life. have yeah. one girl ca came out and said, I've never been to a doctor's visit like mm -hmm. that. That was amazing. Right, yeah. right. And that's what you want. You want to change it because it will have an effect on the care that's happening out there. That's right. I think you so. know, because the medical community needs to wake up how we're addressing women mm -hmm. right. and just say, stop right. writing a prescription for a pill. Stop mm -hmm. writing a prescription for this. Mm -hmm. But that's their training. That's all that I want to make you better. Here's a pill. I don't yes. need a pill. I need my heart heard. Right. <laughs> you know, right. I need you to listen to my yes. broken spirit inside. What of me. is your budget like? 
you got two facilities. We have one. I know what my what our budget is. But what, what's that like? Two places and all that you do. And I saw one of your buildings. It's absolutely beautiful. Oh, so it's a lot you. of money to keep this thing going. Life takes money. <laughs> it does. Mm -hmm. Yes, it does. Yeah. Yes. What do you do for our, fundraising our, and stuff? Yes, our annual budget is uh, just over a million dollars right mm -hmm. now, and um, we the Lord just provides in such a beautiful way with the the private donations. It's a lot of individual families that really come to bat for mm -hmm. us and um, we have some campaigns we have our gala and we have a 5k run called born to run in yeah. the in both cities mm -hmm. yeah. we we love that name mm -hmm. for our little 5k yes. and mm -hmm. fun run and it's a we call it a birthday party mm -hmm. for all the all the children that that we've helped with this ministry what are the sources yeah. mostly individuals people different groups organizations Yes, yes. Like like Protestant, it truly Catholics. does take a, take a village. Yes, we love the ecumenical approach where, you know, we, we certainly um, have a, a Catholic approach to the human person and we follow all Catholic teaching, but we have just had beautiful partnerships with mm -hmm. some of the Protestant churches in the area because yeah. we're, we're all in this together. Yeah, mm -hmm. and, and we found that too. Even our board is ecumenical, our staff is ecumenical, mm -hmm. and yes, they get saturated with our being Catholic, and they're, mm -hmm. some of them, that, well, okay, whose saint day is it today? You know? <laughs> but, but it's an education, it's a That's journey, right. you know? That's right. Something breaks, we're calling on some saint, God help us with this, <laughs> you know? Right. And they're just like, okay, well, you know? Angie and Allison, thank you so much for the great work that you're doing. You are an inspiration, may God bless, keep, protect you, and multiply the saving of lives and souls and building a new culture of life. Thank Bless you. Bless you, ladies. Thank you. Womensnewlife.com for more information and ways that you can support them. We'll be right back. Father Wade Menesis is going to be with us. You're not going to want to miss him and his commentary. We'll be right back. Welcome back. Well, the Friars are on retreat this week, and we're delighted to have Father Wade Menezes with us, who's with the Fathers of Mercy, and you heard him preach today, too. But first, we're going to go straight to Rome to hear from Joan Lewis. Now, Joan, what do you have for us today? Well, hi, Jim and Joy, and Happy New Year again to you. You know, when I learned that the focus of your show today was going to be on helping women with unplanned pregnancies, I have to tell you, my first thought was probably about the most celebrated unplanned pregnancy in the world, that of Mary. I mean, she was engaged, but not married to St. Joseph, and an angel comes to her in a dream and tells her she's about to become a mother. And she says, how can that possibly be? I do not know man. And of course, at the same time we have St. Joseph, he finds out Mary's pregnant, and fortunately an angel comes in a dream and explains the entire uh, event, what will happen, and he is very happy because he thought he'd have to divorce Mary. At the time, those who were engaged uh, were considered almost married, and only a divorce would bring an end to the engagement. But as we know, all went well. And of course, things have changed hugely for, uh, in the world since Mary's unplanned pregnancy, which was welcomed, obviously, with great joy. But uh, for, on, for other women, over all the centuries, there was very often very little help. Now today we know that, for example, in the U.S. alone, there are over 3,700 help centers for women with unplanned pregnancies. Help centers, clinics, um, pro-life social services, maternity homes, and uh, nonprofit adoption agencies. And these are all staffed by people who welcome these women with great love. They support them. They, they make them know that they must welcome life and be joyful about it. And I have to say that in Evangelium Vitae, Pope John Paul, Pope St. John Paul, wrote about these centers. He said, um, thanks to the work of such centers, many unmarried mothers and couples in the difficulty discover new hope and find assistance and support in overcoming hardship and the fear of accepting a newly conceived life. Now, for decades, popes, of course, have denounced abortion, but fortunately, they have also spoken about how to help women. 
with unplanned pregnancies. We must reach out to them. We must have these centers. They must be supported and loved unconditionally. And that's what these centers that I mentioned, they're all staffed by people um, who do this and who reach out. And an interesting thing is, I don't know if you remember, but several months after he became Pope in March of 2013, Francis responded to a young lady who had reached out to him in her unplanned pregnancy. And he said, do not worry, you will be loved. I will help you, I will baptize the child, and I will be its spiritual father. So I honestly don't know the end of that story, but it is a beautiful example. And obviously, we all love anyone who welcomes life. And if there's a way we can help them in an unplanned pregnancy, we'll do it. So lots more to say about this, but time's up here. So back to you. Joan, thanks so much for your comments. And the key word that I got out of that whole time was help. Mm -hmm. You know, we need to offer help. There's more opportunities than ever before. And when you offer help, you can save a life today. It's happening again and again and again. Father, it's wonderful to have you. Thank you. It's great to be with both of you again. Uh, last time, I think, was a few, just a few months ago. Yeah. You know, when I see the work that the uh, New Woman's Life Center is doing, um, I think of the great teaching of the church on the apostolate of the laity you know, the laity preaching in their own way, teaching in their own way, the truths of our one holy Catholic and apostolic faith. And I see this with this particular work regarding the sanctity of human life, the dignity of the human person, what the church teaches about the dignity of women, yeah. um, the sacredness of human sexuality, et cetera, et cetera. And uh, it, it's, it's beautiful to see these teachings becoming incarnated during this Christmas tide season, we want to focus on mm -hmm. the incarnation not only of, of the Christ child, but also the incarnation of our work in the apostolate really bearing fruit. And we see this with organizations like mm -hmm. this. Yeah. It's just fantastic. Yeah, and, and for them to be so close to the abortion clinics. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, and we've, there are so many other centers all over the country that are right next to. Right. You know, we've had Sean Carney on our show who's with uh, 40 Days for Life, mm -hmm. and they too had the same encounter of being right next door. Yeah. And it's like, <laughs> what, what must that be like every day going to work? And how about a chapel in the New Orleans clinic right. that has mm -hmm. the Blessed Sacrament present? You know, mm -hmm. what are the words of consecration at the time of the consecration of the Eucharist at each and every Mass we attend? This is my body. This is my blood. But Jesus meant those words in an other-centered way for the other. Right. Uh, those who are pro-death, they also say, this is my body, mm -hmm. this is my blood, I can do whatever in the heck I want to do with it, and nobody's going to tell me different. Mm -hmm. Well, that's the devil's way of completely contorting and mm -hmm. twisting and turning completely upside down the words of consecration at the Mass, because mm -hmm. he hates the Mass. Yeah. Yeah. And work like this that these two young women are doing is just beautiful to see it, it it's 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 reverent work it's mm -hmm. it's about the sacredness of life yeah mm -hmm. and they're restoring not only a, a culture of life a civilization of life but true femininity yeah and, and i love that whole approach mm -hmm. that they're taking regarding the whole person yes she's pregnant but the, how we want to help you goes beyond your pregnancy. Yes. We want you to look at your body. We want you to see the sacredness of your body, et cetera. Mm -hmm. well, yeah, and we, you know, we run a pregnancy medical center in Birmingham, and it really is restoring her own sanity back to herself yeah. and saying, no, no, you were made for more. Right. Like, you are good. You are made in the image and likeness of God. She isn't feeling good. She yeah. isn't believing she's made in the image and likeness yeah. of God. And you get to say, you're good and God loves you and how can we help you? Right, and get her away from that sense of being used, mm -hmm. as you quoted John Paul yeah. II, uh, Jim, just earlier in this episode, uh, the opposite of love isn't hate. The mm -hmm. opposite of, of love is usury, utilitarianism. Mm -hmm. and, and women are used. Yes. And, and, and maybe that's all she's known from abusive yeah. boyfriends yeah. Uh, and ended up in this state of, of becoming pregnant, mm -hmm. being pregnant. And she needs to see herself as something more than just an item that's used. Yes. Father, close this with a blessing, please. I certainly will. May the blessing of Almighty God, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit descend upon you both and all of your viewers of At Home with Jim and Joy and remain with you all now and forever. Amen. 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 Thank you, Father. All together, we're building a new culture of life and life will prevail. And he'll use people just like us who have succeeded and who have failed. He'll change us, he'll transform us and make us eloquent spokespersons on behalf of life. Keep it on EWTN. You're always at home with Jim and Joy. Bye now. <laughs>